Rob Ford celebrates his third anniversary as one of Toronto's most controversial mayors. A call for Canadians to be able to sell their kidneys and beware of zombies walking Toronto streets this weekend. Humber News starts now. Hello, it's Friday, October 25th. Welcome to Humber News, coming to you from the Broadcast Centre here at the North Campus. I'm Erica Vella. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Jonathan Rumley. Ahead on our show, we'll have all of your news, sports and entertainment highlights, as well as your five-day weather forecast. But first, Erica has our top story. Toronto Police held a news conference today asking for the public's help in locating suspects of a brutal murder in Chinatown. Three men in their 20s were beaten with baseball bats at 349 Spadina Avenue on September 30th. Danny Law died in hospital Monday and another victim's condition in hospital is unknown. Toronto police believe an altercation happened outside Union Nightclub an hour prior to the fight. Detective Sergeant Pauline Gray says the murder was shocking and extremely violent. This is the city's 49th homicide of the year. Police say the perpetrators are up against homicide and attempted murder charges. They are looking for four to five Asian males between the ages of 21 and 25. Gray is asking anyone with details to call 416-808-7400. Ontario is making some brand new moves to better protect animals. Community Safety Minister Madeline Mayer announced the changes this morning at High Park Zoo in Toronto. The Ontario Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals is getting more powers to conduct inspections of zoos and aquariums. And the province is giving the OSPCA $5.5 million annually. There will also be legislation that will address puppy and kitten mills and a 911-style 24-hour hotline for reporting animal welfare concerns. Health Canada is investigating two Ontario deaths that may be linked to the ingestion of hand sanitizer. The details of the deaths have not been released. Ontario Centre for Forensic Science has tested two bottles of sanitizer suspected of being associated with the fatalities. Botico hand sanitizer contains the highly toxic alcohol called methanol and not ethyl alcohol as listed on the bottle. Methanol can cause blindness or death if consumed. Health Canada issued an advisory on Thursday noting the product's mislabel. The advisory urges people to use the product with caution and to never consume it. What is the price of saving a life? Researchers at the University of Calgary think they may have the answer. Alexandra Gundy has the story. There are very few things harder to wait for than a life-saving organ transplant. Demand is always greater than supply. Some researchers from the University of Calgary say that paying kidney do donors will actually improve the quality of life for people on dialysis. There's no compensation for Canadian donors and bringing commerce into the equation will introduce an ethical dilemma. Sylvia Wojcik teaches ethical issues in nursing practice. Having, having a monetary value attached to a vital organ poses a question of fairness of allocation of resources as to affordability, people that may afford uh, a payment of $10,000 versus people that have no means or no resources to access that. Right now, 3,400 Canadians are waiting for a kidney transplant. In 2010, one third of the people who died waiting for organs were waiting for a kidney. Organ selling is illegal in all countries except Iran. I would probably have to say I would donate a kidney, but I wouldn't necessarily take the money for it. I would do 10000 If more, that would be better, but 10000 would be good. <laughs> probably like half a million dollars. I would donate a kidney, but I wouldn't take money for it. So why is $10,000 the magic number? Well, researchers found that 54% of respondents changed their mind. Yes, over half of those surveyed who said that they wouldn't consider giving a kidney said they would consider it for 10 grand. Alexandra Gundy, Humber News. A homeless woman has been sentenced to 80 years in prison after admitting to fatally stabbing two Scarborough residents in Atlantic City last year. A New Jersey Superior Court judge gave Antoinette Pelzer two consecutive 40-year sentences. The Philadelphia woman pleaded guilty to killing Po Lin Wan and her daughter, Alice Misi Lung, while they were on vacation last August. 
Pelzer was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia at the age of 24 and was not taking her medication. Prosecutors say Pelzer was aware of her actions and was deemed legally insane. Sorry, legally sane at the time of the killings. Mayor Rob Ford is celebrating today what he says is a successful three years in office. Ford says he's saved taxpayers millions of dollars and reduced city spending. Although he claims the subway extension for Scarborough as a victory, much of his time in office has been overshadowed by controversy from the alleged crack video that got international attention to his personal driver being arrested in a drug investigation, and bad press won't stop him from running another term. This Sunday marks the one-year countdown to the 2014 election, and we could see campaign signs as soon as January 2nd. When we come back, we'll have more news from across the country and around the world. Shao Li Li will have the sports news, and we'll have your weather forecast with Natalie Stoberman. As we prepare for this weekend's Halloween festivities, I'll have your complete five-day weather forecast after the break.